Welcome to the Idiot Box. This is House of the Dragon Episode 5. The episode begins with Lady Rhea of Vale riding her horse to hunt for a deer. She comes across a hooded figure who turns out to be her husband, Damon. Yes, she is Damon's wife, although the marriage was never consummated. After she throws shade about Damon's impotence, Rhea deduces that Damon has come to end the marriage and goes for her bow. But Damon knocks her off the horse, paralyzing her. As he leaves, Rhea mocks him again. I knew you couldn't finish. Damon grabs a rock and walks toward her. The scene shifts to the sea. King Viserys is seen depositing his lunch to the bow of the ship. The royal fleet is heading to Driftmark, where the king hopes to marry Rhaenyra to the sea snake Sun Laenor. In King's Landing, Otto Hightower is seen leaving the capital as Alicent attempts to stop him and they argue that he shouldn't have tried to advance her child as heir. Otto tells the young queen that the king will soon die and if Rhaenyra succeeds him, war will follow and to secure her claim. She'll have to put your children to the sword. She'll have no choice. He tells Allison she only has two choices, either to prepare Agon to rule or be ready to beg Rhaenyra for mercy. Boy, that's harsh. Later in the courtyard, Allison talks with Larry Strong, son of the king's new hand. Larry asks the queen if Rhaenyra is well. After he heard a rumor that the maester delivered her a potion the night after the Daemon incident, this causes Allison to suspect something did happen that night. Viserys, visibly ill, meets with Corlys, where he learns that Lady Rhea died of a hunting mishap. But we know the truth. He proposes the marriage idea. The two men agree to terms. Rhaenyra and Laenor will marry with their children keeping the Velaryon family name before their firstborn ascends to the Iron Throne as a proudly renamed Targaryen. Dragons will rule the Seven Kingdoms for the next hundred years, just as they did the last. For their part, the cousins Rhaenyra and Laenor are able to make peace with the arrangement. Recognizing her future husband's interest in men, Rhaenyra pitches Laenor on a deal where they will both be allowed to love whoever and however they want outside of their marriage. That we perform our duty to our fathers and to the realm. And when it's done, each of us dines as we see fit. Rhaenys, however, expresses concern over Laenor's true nature and reminds Corlys that Rhaenyra's throne claim will be questioned the moment King dies. Knives will come out for her, her husband, and for their heirs. Corlys dismisses this by saying the marriage will combine the two most powerful armies in Westeros, and no one will oppose them. Laenor meets with his lover Sir Joffrey and discuss about their future. On their way back, Kristen proposes that the two run away together to Essos, but Rhaenyra declines and tells him about Laenor and her arrangement. So you want me to be your whore? A heartbroken Kristen leaves. After returning to King's Landing, Viserys collapses, and Kristen is summoned by Alicent who asks him about the Night of the Daemon incident. Kristen, too guilt-ridden to realize the Queen's question is directed at Daemon, and not himself, reveals that he slept with Rhaenyra. Now it's time for wedding celebration. A wedding feast has begun. Jason Lannister comes to congratulate the soon-to-be-married princess and asks about the whereabouts of Queen Alicent. I understand the Queen is still readying herself for the celebrations. This is why men wage war. Because a woman would never be ready for the battle in time. Awkward. Everyone is shocked as Damon makes his way to the dining table. As the king starts his speech, Alicent enters the hall in an emerald green dress. The beacon on the high tower. Do you know what color it glows when Old Town calls its banners to war? Green. Laner and Rhaenyra perform a dance and everyone joins. Gerald Royce, Lady Rhea's uncle, tells Damon they are onto him for the murder. But instead, Damon tells him he'll be coming to claim the runestone as it was promised to his late wife and now belongs to him. Well, now we know why he killed her. Laner and Joffrey deduces that Sir Criston is Rhaenyra's paramour. Joffrey goes to talk with Criston about their interests. Damon joins Rhaenyra in the dance and asks her if this is what she really wants. To which Rhaenyra replies if he really wants her, he can try and take her by force, and suddenly a fight breaks out and everyone is confused on what is happening. The confusion is cleared with Kristen beating Joffrey to death. The crowd leaves as Laenor cries over his lover's body. Kristen takes off his armor and prepares to kill himself, but Alicent comes to stop him. The episode ends with Rhaenyra and Laenor being married in private and King Viserys collapses. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe for more.